Hi, today I'm reviewing the beautiful Alfa Romeo 159. So, let's take her for a test drive. One of the things you first notice when you hop into the Alpha 159 is that it's a little bit bigger than the 156 which it replaced. The 156 was a fantastic car in my opinion. Uh, we're very uh, loyal supporters of that model. Um, this vehicle is almost nine inches longer and almost three and a half inches wider, uh, which for a person of my size um, is a big help. But a lot of purists found that the 156 previous to the 159 was probably more of an Alfa Romeo uh, in size and style than the 159 which replaced it. Uh, this 159 is actually built on a General Motors and Fiat platform and uh, they built over 240,000 of these cars, so they were successful, but considering they didn't sell in huge numbers, especially here in Australia, an Alfa Romeo uh, is not a very common car, but you do see uh, quite a number of 159s on the road. I'm just about to climb a steep hill here now. Um, this is a good test for any car because a lot of cars have trouble getting up this particular hill. Um, this car's not only climbing the hill, uh, but it's actually gaining in, in speed as I'm, as I'm going along and I'm only just touching the accelerator. So there's plenty of oomph in this motor. And uh, I remember when I bought a brand new Hyundai Tucson with a two litre petrol motor. And when I brought it up this hill, I had, it was a manual and I had to go back into second gear and it got down to 40 kilometers an hour and had trouble climbing. Uh, this particular 159 2.4 diesel um, not only climbed the hill in top gear, uh, but was increasing its speed rapidly as I went up the hill. So plenty of power, great for hill climbing um, and just a very enjoyable drive. I'm now coming down a steep hill and the brakes are really uh, very reassuring. I'm not worried about being able to pull up in time. Uh, I can hear a slight rumble from uh, wheel bearings. You'll probably hear that. It sounds like the real, rear wheel bearings are making a bit of a noise. Could also be tire noise. This has quite chunky knobbly tires and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it was actually tire noise more so than wheel bearings. Uh, something else I notice about the Alpha 159s is they feel really well glued together um, or welded together or bolted together. They just feel very solid. Apart from a, a bit of an annoying rattle coming from the wind deflector inside the sunroof. Um, I saw someone had chopped a bit of cardboard in there before. I wondered why and uh, I should have left it there because now I know why. Uh, look, it's only a trivial thing. Um, but the rest of the car is very firm, very solid, very well put together. And um, I was told that these cars are renowned for their rigidity uh, in an accident. They're quite strong. They're a lot stronger um, than most cars on the road. And um, they score a five star NCAP rating in Australia and they score a five uh, star rating in many countries of the world, including European countries. 
So this is a, a strong, well put together car. It performs well. It's uh, reasonably quick off the mark from the traffic lights. I wouldn't say it's the fastest I've driven. Uh, they say that zero to 100 in 8.3 seconds. Uh, that's 62 miles an hour in 8.3 seconds. Um, that's quick. It's not um, anything especially quick. Uh, but once it gets going, it then seems to come into a world of its own. It seems to, uh, once it's off the mark, it really just comes alive and it thrives on being driven. It just loves to be driven. And uh, it seems to be uh, willing uh, and almost begging to take a little bit of harsh treatment. It just uh, is that sort of car. Uh, the steering wheel in here, which has also the sports paddles on the back for changing gear. Uh, this is the uh, uh, fully automatic. It has an ISIN uh, automatic transmission. And you can put it into sports mode and you can uh, up and down through the gears on the sports paddles here at the back. This multifunction steering wheel um, has like Bluetooth controls and uh, you can control the stereo um, searching and volume up and down. Uh, and the steering wheel itself uh, is, is quite a beautiful sports wheel. Uh, it feels like you've actually got into and sat down inside an arcade game. Uh, it's, it's that kind of steering wheel. And driving the car feels more like you're playing um, a game than actually driving a motor vehicle. Uh, it has an incredible feel to it. Uh, the way the gauges are laid out is sensible, it's sporty, um, and, you know, fully functional. Like, it's, uh, it's everything that you need. There's nothing really missing. The sound system is good. Uh, this one is a 2009 model, and it has Bluetooth capability. And um, overall, uh, I just find them a very good car. For what you get and for the price that you pay, an Alfa Romeo 159 represents excellent quality. The suspension in this is a little bit stiff, but not too much. I mean, it has got the sports type suspension, but it's not jittery. It's not uh, bone jarring over bumps. Um, it soaks up bumps very well, handles corners excellently. As I said, the brakes pull you up, you know, on a dime if that's what you need. And um, the driving experience is really quite good. For a car of its age, and for the price that you can purchase these for, I think the Alpha 159 represents, um, you know, an excellent uh, purchase. And it certainly has styling and comfort levels that are very easy to live with. Uh, it's a car that, even though, you know, they can be purchased for just a few thousand dollars, it's a vehicle that I catch people uh, pointing to as I'm driving down the road, like saying, look at that. And uh, I've even had cars pull up beside me on the highway and um, people taking photographs with their mobile phones uh, of an Alpha 159 going down the highway. So some people don't know what they are and they think, well, look at that, that's a car. And uh, that's one of the great things about driving an Alfa Romeo 159. So um, I'm nearly back home and uh, just enjoyed our short trip. The handling has been excellent. It's very predictable. It does what you want it to do. And um, I think anyone would enjoy a ride in an Alpha 159, whether behind the wheel um, or a passenger. Um, there's enough room. My way of measuring a vehicle for room, if I can put my fist on top of my head, then there's plenty of room. I can just do it in this car. And uh, cause I'm a big boy of uh, basically nearly six foot tall and around 300 pounds, 140 kilograms. And um, if I can get in here and feel quite comfortable, uh, then the car is quite spacious and uh, you could recommend it almost to anybody. Well, I'm just about to pull back up into my driveway and uh, hope you've enjoyed the ride. Thanks very much. The 
Alfa Romeo 159 commenced production in 2005 and continued until 2011. Some vehicles were still available for sale in 2012. The Alfa 159 replaced the 156 and was succeeded by the Alfa Romeo Giulia. Approximately 240,000 Alfa 159s were produced with a variety of engines and finishes. There were several diesel engines and quite a few petrol engines. This particular example is a 2009 model 2.4 litre turbo diesel JTDM and is finished in the TI pack. The colour is Alpha Red, a very popular colour. These are a medium sized executive cars with a sports flair. This one has the ISIN full automatic transmission. And the interior has brushed aluminium accents which complement the leather quite nicely. This particular one has a sunroof. Leg room for rear passengers is quite good and the nicely shaped and sculpted leather seats continue in the back with enough room for three adults or two adults and one child. Opening the trunk is simply done by pushing the Alfa Romeo badge. The trunk has a fair bit of depth and is quite roomy. Both horizontally and vertically the depth is quite usable. A highlight of all Alfa Romeos is the sports instrumentation, sports steering wheel and ease of driver controls close to your fingertips. Under the hood, this particular model has a five cylinder turbo diesel 2.4 litre engine with 153 kilowatts of power. This engine is used in several other motor vehicles, including some, including some General Motors products, and are generally known to be reliable while being fuel efficient and giving good performance. One of the much loved features of an Alfa Romeo is their V-shaped front grille, which some people call the Alfa Love Heart grille. The 159 has an excellent set of front lights, three on each side, giving the vehicle a really cool look. The starting sequence for the 159 is quite simple. Simply insert the key, place your foot on the brake pedal and press the start button. This one is showing the have engine checked warning light. Uh, I know what it is, it's actually a glow plug needs replacing. One of the glow plugs inside this diesel motor uh, has uh, separated the case from the electrode and the case is stuck inside the head. Um, could be a major problem on some cars. It's quite common on this model and it's not that hard to remove. Um, simply, you simply tap uh, a thread into the casing, uh, put a reversed uh, screw into it and um, you can then generally extract the uh, glow plug which is broken off. 
So this was giving us a warning that the glow plugs uh, were not working and we were able to replace four of the five glow plugs. The vehicle starts first go every go. A little bit harder on cold days because um, diesels like to have a, uh, a warmed up cylinders to start easily, uh, but the car will start within three or four pushes uh, of the button, even on a cold winter's morning, which it is here in Australia at the moment. Uh, although it's sunny, you know, we're still having uh, almost freezing nights here. Um, but once the vehicle is warmed up, it'll start first go, every go. Uh, it's not a major problem uh, because uh, the glow plugs were only about $10 each, so $50 for a set of five for a five-cylinder engine. And uh, fitting them was quite quick, took me about 20 minutes, and is very similar to changing a spark plug. Uh, when I get that final glow plug replaced, then the check engine light will automatically go out, or I can turn it off. And uh, that seems to be quite a common problem with the diesel uh, versions of the Alpha 159 and other Alpha Romeos. Um, it's not a major thing, but it can be quite common. Uh, people who don't know could get taken advantage of by mechanics. It's not an expensive uh, or time consuming thing to do. Like I said, $50 uh, and 20 minutes, uh, I was able to change four out of five glow plugs and the vehicle starts first go every go now, except for very cold mornings where it takes maybe three goes to get it started and running. Um, another thing that is um, uh, quite common on these is that you may get a, uh, on the diesels, a warning light coming up saying that the uh, anti-pollution um, filter is blocked. Now people might think that's the catalytic converter or the, um, the diesel particulate filter is blocked. Uh, it's actually something a lot simpler than that um, and it's quite common and the car will actually correct itself. Basically the cure for that is to take the car for a good drive down the motorway, uh, take it up to uh, in Australia maximum limits 110, take it fast up to 110 um, and sort of uh, take your foot off accelerator and accelerate hard again. Um, kind of drive the car a little bit hard um, and what will happen is you will force a regen a regeneration of the exhaust and filter system and what will happen is a little bit of unburnt diesel will be mixed with the uh, particles and they will be spat out the exhaust not as smoke but as a sooty liquid um, that's quite legal and that meets design rules rather than some vehicles like Mazda's which might have an add blue tank where you have to add uh, a type of kerosene to the exhaust to clear it uh, these cars will actually just use the uh, just the normal diesel um, so you know it might take a 20 minute run um, and it can happen quite often could happen as often as once a month or once every few months especially on vehicles which only do short trips like to the local shops or school or to work um, so these are a car that love to be driven if you drive it down the motorway regularly you probably will never have an anti-pollution filter warning light come on uh, if it does come on just take your car for a good drive. Drive it a little bit hard, keep to the speed limit of course, and generally in a 20 minute drive, the system will correct itself. You may even at some stage have the car become unresponsive to the accelerator. You might be doing 110 and as you try to accelerate harder, um, it might drop down to 100 or down to 90 or even down to 80. It's not gonna probably get down below 80 kilometers an hour. Um, so don't worry too much. And then all of a sudden the car will just come alive. And that means that the filter has now been unblocked and cleared. And uh, if you read in the owner's manuals for the diesel Alpha 159s, it's, um, it's a normal procedure. It's a normal part of owning one of these cars. So it's not ideal, <laughs> but don't worry. It is normal. It's not gonna cost you money. Your car hasn't been damaged. It's not ruined, um, but you will have to take it for a good drive let the um, anti-pollution system regenerate itself and uh, it'll all come good. So hopefully that bit of information there was worth watching this, uh, uh, this car review because uh, those are two quite common problems with the glow plugs and also with the um, anti-pollution filter being blocked on alpha uh, diesel engines. Okay.
Thank you.